All right, so let's jump to the second topic of our podcast, which is uh, how do you grow a cause on Steemit? Uh, you know, Sterling, you're, you're part of, uh, you have a cause, uh, psychologic anarchism, and you're part of the greater cause of uh, uh, anarchism, libertarianism, uh, that stuff. So what, what do you think, you know, let's say somebody is coming from uh, an activist group or a nonprofit organization or something, and, and they want to build their cause on steam it what, what advice do you have for them yeah that's i feel like there's some similarities or some overlap between just building a following in general as as it is with building a cause but i think the, the key thing again is marketing being able to put your material out there and have a strong brand behind it so the name of that cause the direction and goals the mission of that cause all needs to be something that's thoroughly developed before getting out there and getting on the, getting on steam it. I would also recommend just looking up and researching ideas behind marketing. What, what the psychology is behind branding yourself and behind or branding your cause and getting that material out to people and having people relate to it so they can get involved and think about it and then spread the cause outward to their friends. So there's all these different variables in involved in getting a, a cause started, you know, and I, one of the things that I did on Psychologic Anarchist when I started it on Facebook, I did spend a little money on advertising. Of course, that's how the demon of Facebook is sort of set up if you want anybody to see some of your material. So I did spend a little bit of money on advertising early on, and that helped a little bit with it. Uh, but now it's, it's sort of, I, I, I spend every now and then I'll spend money on my articles in order to help promote my articles, but like the memes and stuff, those are pretty self-perpetuating and they spread pretty rapidly. So it's, uh, it's pretty self-sustaining now, but if you do want to grow faster, you could probably spend some money on it. Not something I recommend or that you have to do, but it, that idea is out there. That's one of the good things about steam it though. The advertising won't really be necessary anymore because you can make money on posting your stuff. And as you make money, your stuff, it starts to trend if you've got your cause well established. So it kind of, you know, two, uh, two birds with one stone sentiment. Uh, Stephen and Gabriel, what do you think about the question, you know, about how to grow a cause or how to use steam it for evangelism? Uh, um, Gabriel, would you like to go first? No, he hit the nail on the head there. It's, it's just the same as any other type of marketing or advertising. It's just getting it in front of the right people, whether you want to pay for advertising on Facebook or you want to just use the steam it uh, system or whatever it is. I mean, you just need to get it in front of the eyeballs. So if you're trying to promote the cause first and foremost, it's important to be honest about that motivation with you, yourself because, you know, a lot of people, especially on Steam it, where there's the monetization factor, it's like they get kind of drawn into getting preoccupied with the financial aspect and they kind of forget about the cause as being the primary motive. So if your cause promotion is the primary motive, then you can't get worried or hung up on the financial side. So if a certain post doesn't do so well or, or whatever, you can't let that discourage you. You can't let it affect your, your path or anything like that. You just got to keep on slugging at it and be happy with the new views that come along, the new followers that join up. Like there's a lot of likes or upvotes that you'll receive from smaller accounts. At, you know, so they're not whales. So they're not paying you a whole bunch of money they're actual people and they're going to spread your, your memes. Right. So you have to be happy with that. So I, I would say, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's, I, but we got to go into specifics, a little more specifics. If we really want to help people, you know? Um, and I think some specific things you can do to grow a cause and, and some of them carry over into creating a following is write a mission statement. You know, let people know what you're about. You know, and as, um, darn, I forgot this guy's name. Can't remember his name, but this is the name of his book. Start with why, you know, why, why, why are you here on Steam It? What are you trying to do? What motivates you? You know, it's like in fiction where they say, you know, there's a quote from a famous author who says, you know, make sure, I think it might be Stephen King even, who said, make sure your character in every scene want something, even if it's as simple as a glass of water, because it's the motivation. It's the motivation of the individual that provokes empathy 
and interest from other people, you know? And so that's why I think uh, a mission statement is a really good uh, way to begin with a cause or even creating a following as well on Steam it and tell people why, you know, what's it, tell, tell people what your goal is. First of all, what is your goal? What do you want to do? Um, you know, what, like how, what are the specifics? What visualize that specific outcome and tell us specifically what it is you want to do. How do you want to change the world? How do, how do you want to change people? And then tell us why, and not just why, because we have to save mother earth, but why do you care about it? Yeah. Why do you care about it? And why should I care about it? And I think another good tool uh, along that line is a manifesto, which is, um, you know, a way of building out your mission statement, making it bigger uh, and explaining it in a catchy way and illustrating it too, you know? Mm -hmm. And then every piece of content you make, you know, you, you, you have to make a promise. I think you have to make a promise. You say, I'm going to deliver xyz type of content on on xyz schedule that's this is what you can expect from me you know, this is what i'm going to give you what i want from you is you know follow up vote whatever and and then you have to relate every single piece of content you create back to your original mission statement and manifesto and and keep your promises about your production schedule i think that that is real practical advice to get, get you know causes started on steam and and that would be a lot easier on Steemit if we had something similar to uh, Facebook pages where you could post something that's always there at the top of your page explaining who you are, offering links and that kind of thing. Unfortunately, we don't have that yet. So something you might want to do is with every post that you make, add a link to a website or somewhere that is stationary and is constantly there. Good, great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I did was I, I at, at the end of most all of my posts, I put that information, where, what my website is, my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, and then my photo. That's the relatable aspect of it. I, actually, I put the drawing, you know, that's another thing, collaboration with other people on Steemit or just other people online. Kalen, at Kalen Art drew my, <laughs> my photo for fun, and I use that as my little signature photo, so that's kind of cool. Nice. They're a cool thing to do. Um, I mean, what I do for my uh, Steam Smart podcast and what I've been doing for my more recent articles is I just post, I post them everywhere. Use old Steam it related Facebook groups. I use I use my own Facebook group. I throw it to LinkedIn though. I don't really expect anything from LinkedIn. Uh, I've mentioned it before. I use the social media platform Minds, which gives you twenty views an hour for each time you click it. So you know, just sit around, click it, and then use and dump them on a video like this or you know on the podcast. Um, just indiscriminate views and then also being very active in the Steemit community. And that's actually um, what I've been finding is people don't like to talk as much as I like to talk. Um, so when you talk, um, people are listening and you can have conversations with just about anybody. People are interested in a lot of stuff. They just don't like to bring it up first. So, um, a lot of people I've been talking to, um, I've just been, you know, also throwing the links out. So I guess for somebody who's socially involved or who doesn't have a problem talking and meeting people, I would recommend just here, check out this. This is what I'm currently doing. This is why I love the Steemit platform. And this is how I think it's relatable to you. And this is how I think you can start building and growing an audience. And this, and I'll, you know, and then I start off the conversation by telling them a little about, um, you know, the, the little few cents, the jumps and joys for the incremental gains that you get for continually producing better and better content. Um, as you, and you know, as you advertise, you start recognizing that people are now following you. And so, um, you know, you can do it very naturally by just building relationships with people. And there's a lot of people on steam it that I bet anybody would have friends making like it, you steam it already is driven by something that makes everybody go okay you're like me more than some of these people outside of the platform um you found it in you know very narrow funnel there weren't a lot of ways to get access to steam it it was marketed to very particularized 
uh, groups of people, and those groups of people are now here. Mm. But I think another, um, some of the most effective marketing I've done is, you know, beyond starting with good ideas and clear, you know, uh, concepts, you know, interesting concepts for things, um, is Steemit.chat. Because yeah. that uh, Steemit users go there, you know, you post something to Facebook or a forum, you don't know if you're going to find Steemit users there, you know. But Steemit.chat, there are a lot of Steemit users there. Um, and, you know, the, there's the post-promotion uh, moderated channel and there's some more uh, specialized channels around different topics. You can uh, post uh, um, pieces, you know, uh, blog posts there. You can, you can get, you know, and, and you can also uh, find people to exchange, you know, critiques with. And, you know, like, um, hey, I wrote a post, you know, and somebody says, and you, you know, a good idea is to go and comment on that post, you know, because... You know, you're starting to build uh, those connections. I think another thing is to do things um, outside of Steemit, but that can feed back into Steemit, uh, like community events, you know, for a cause. You can have a community event. You can have uh, something like what, uh, what we're going to do this Thursday, which is um, by the time this episode gets out, this will be in the past, but uh, the um, letting off steam session that we're going to do where anybody can jump in and, you know, say their piece and it produces a video and then you can upload that to, uh, to your steam and a blog uh, account in a blog post, you know? So I think the, um, you know, reaching, you know, reaching out to individuals, the individuals most likely to be able to, um, you know, contribute something, you know, as like an upvote or a comment or whatever. I think that's, that's wise marketing right now for steam it, you know, Definitely. And also the Steam Speak. There's some, there's a lot of good people. Yeah, tell us about Steam Speak, but because I haven't checked that out. Okay. How, does, how does that work? What's that okay. About? You just join a Team Speak channel on, uh, you download Team Speak. Uh, you go to ts.steamspeak.com. Uh, it's owned by First Dickin. He is very generously u- uh, using. Uh, his own servers. It has 200 channels, or not 200 channels. It has a 200 user limit base. And as soon as we get more people, he's totally willing to up it. And he's all about these collaborative um, discussions. And there's some there's some fascinating discussions from crypto investments and getting some you know just getting some information you wouldn't typically hear and then there's also uh psychology philosophy is a big one for us uh all over the place and we just shoot the shit drugs come up every once in a while uh there's quite a few psychedelic and uh weed smokers in that channel so we get to we we just have a good time and we encourage each other to build content and we're just like oh that's a good idea go run with it take it take it um so there's like this this almost natural like uh think tank that is going on in this channel or in this uh steam speak and so i i really highly recommend people to get involved in it and and start having conversations with people start making friends advertise your links on there that's what i do and those guys um i mean so far they've liked my content almost each time i posted it um hopefully it's not just because you know they're bullshitting me but they if you talk to these guys they're about value they won't upvote your shit if you don't contribute any value um and you'll you'll hear some marvelous rants from first stick and they're they're hilarious and they're so filled with truth about um we've talked about just people flooding uh steam it with crap content just trying to suck out the the likes for the pennies all over the place and you know that's that's their tactic and you know we're we're kind of all against that and i think that's something that anybody who's really invested into steam it as a um it's like overall platform everybody else understands that's that is something very serious for steam it to evolve past just a, a an easy fad a quick money making scheme it's so much more so on that channel or on that um team speak uh for steam what um what do what is the consensus on what how to identify quality content you know or you know like 
How, so let's communicate to our listeners what is considered quality content by the people on that um, team speak. Okay, well, uh, I guess um, all of us on the team speak, on the Steam speak, we're, you know, we've, we've, we're online frequently. We're looking for information on whatever interests us, you know, where that's, that's a very subjective thing. Subjective value theory is part of the platform for Steam. And we're, they're very, very frugal with their likes. So it's, it's evokes emotion or evokes that, um, curiosity as well it, it it satisfies that curiosity in a certain subject it evokes an emotional response such as happiness or laughter or sadness you know those those stories that are really making a lot uh, gabriel your poems must evoke emotion right um so those are the kinds of things uh that they they have to really trigger something in the human psyche that um, wasn't there before. And that's something that we're, we're actively evaluating on the inside. And I think some people are just, it's, it's subconscious for most, but the people here, it's very active. So they'll, they'll let you know if, you're, if your content sucks. They'll also give you advice how to make it better. Like they're, they're in it for the long haul. They want this platform to succeed. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, let's jump to the third question, which uh, I hopefully Sterling will will find uh, interesting. Is uh, Sterling tell us all about this psychological anarchism? What's this? What's this concept? What does it mean? Uh, why? Why should people care? 